Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We're continuing today on another pandemic project. This one is part of several uh, Penn Senators that have come into a box uh, from one of our viewers, Ron, who uh, asked me to tune them up. Uh, they're 4 Senators. He's got a variety of them, but this one is the 113H. It's the special 4 Senator. Uh, this one was made in the USA. And uh, but why I chose this one, and I've done Senators in the past, this one's a left-handed reel. So we'll, oh, the drag's not on, but this is a left-handed reel. And we'll show you uh, how it's similar and how it's a little bit different than, uh, than your normal 4-0 Senator. So the uh, reel, this, this reel set up for uh, trolling. It's got wire line on it and a heavy mono leader on top of that. And uh, this one is capable of catching some very big fish. So we'll uh, take you through this. Uh, while we're doing this, a special thanks and special shout out to our first responders. Uh, I've put a video together. I'm offering to repair your reel for free. Uh, no charge to you if you are a first responder. That includes anybody working in the hospitals, uh, in public service from the police, fire, uh, EMTs, uh, prisons, uh, wherever you may be, if you're working uh, during this pandemic, trying to keep all of us safe and, and all of the folks under your charge healthy, then uh, I'm, I understand why you haven't had time to work on your reel, and it would be my pleasure to work on your reel for you at your charge. So uh, there will be a video at the end of this. Um, there will be a business card, and just uh, simply connect with me through the business card or mail your reel to me, and I'll be happy to, uh, to do some service on that. It's my way of saying thanks. So this reel is left-handed. It's a 4-0. And you'll notice a couple of things. I'm taking the exterior pieces off first. We've done the handle. We've taken the star adjuster off. Now we're working on the side plate. This is a graphite frame. This uh, replaced the earlier versions that had the metal cross posts in it. There's been about three or four different versions of Senators. This one's kind of in the middle. Uh, this one is when the Senators were still made in the U.S., so it's probably prior to 2005 or so. So it's not a not a new reel. Um, Penn shipped most of its uh, manufacture over to China in 2005. And if it doesn't say made in the USA on it, it wasn't. Some of them are new, uh, new generational, like if you look at the GTI-2, uh, that one uh, was marked by them moving it to... Uh, to China, the GTI was made in the U.S., the GTI 2 was not. Uh, some of them it's a little bit harder to tell, so I go by that one that uh, if it says it was made here, it was. If it doesn't say it was, it was made here, it wasn't, and that's uh, fairly good. And on this reel, it says it right here on the bottom here, made in the USA. Okay, so we just took the side plate off, I pull the spool. There's a burring here. We want to make sure that this gets cleaned up. So I'm going to take a cotton swab and get the, the old grease off the side of it here. I'm going to just take my Phillips head and make sure that burring is spinning, which it is. And then I'm just going to flood it with uh, real oil. I oil burrings. Just going to flood it. It's probably been a while since that's uh, been done. So let's go ahead and do that. While I'm at it, I'm just going to see if I can't uh, use some steel wool here just to take a little bit of the, the salt and grime off these metal pieces. And we'll come over here. There's a little bit of oil and some debris on the spool, so let's just make sure that's clean on that side. I'm going to grab my uh, brush and I'm going to put some pen, universal, uh, pen precision real grease on that. And I'm just going to put this right back in the holder because if I don't, uh, it'll start running all over the place. Let's just grab that leader, put that back on there. Drop that into the slot, and we're just going to set that off to the side. All right, we're going to come over and do the, the main uh, work on this. Looks like we got a lot of dried grease and things in here, so let's, uh, let's give this a cleaning. Let's take it apart and uh, service it. So these procedures are going to be the same, whether you have a right-handed or a left-handed addition, but uh, you'll just see that there's a couple of minor differences if you're working on the left-handed reel. These have a lot of drag area on it. The max drag on this reel is good. 
Uh, I believe they have seven washers in there. We'll count them when we take them out. But uh, max drag is all about the number, of the area of the drag washers, and seven of them would certainly give you a lot of area, and that would increase your max drag. They're also bigger uh, HD100 washers. All right, you'll notice I'm cupping my hand as I'm removing the bridge screws. That's because there's a spring that holds the anti-reverse dog, and I don't want to lose that. Uh, a couple of uh, folks have said a sure-fired way not to lose that is to, to take this and put it in a plastic bag and then remove it. That way, if the spring shoots, uh, you, you've captured it in the bag. I kind of capture it this way. I take all the stress off of the bridge, kind of push that through, and now if the, if the spring has fallen out, it's fallen into my hand. And a lot of times it just sits in the side case. And in this case it's fallen out, but it's fallen right into my hand here. So that's the spring we're talking about. Okay, and then we're going to just take the side plate screws. They're all going into my parts tray. I'm going to lay the bridge down for a moment. You can come over here and just finish taking the rest of these parts off. When I service a reel, I like to make sure that we have all of the pieces and parts removed, cleaned, and put back. Right now I'm just struggling a little bit. There's some tension on this. I just want to... I never have luck. I can't grab this little thing and just... Sometimes I need the pliers to help me with that. Okay, the springs for the yoke are going to go in there. Now you'll notice we just have a little bit of dirt and old grease in the case. I'm just going to Give a light spray at WD-40 to help me break that up. And I'm going to use a paper towel to see if we can't get it out with that. We can. It cleans up nicely. If you uh, if you needed to, you could uh, scrape it down a little bit. But in this case, this side plate is in good condition. Okay. You want to make sure that your your sides of your metal pieces are clean. This one's got a little bit of old grease on it on the yoke. Just wipe that down on both sides. We have the pinion gear here. I like to make sure that the pinion gear is clean. Uh, the pinion gear from time to time traps stuff. So what I do is I, I give it a flood of the penetrating oil first. And then I run my, my little pick inside the channels of the teeth. And I wipe them down on the, the paper towel here. And that way you just make sure that you have clean and clear channels so that nothing's hanging up in there as it goes to mesh with that main gear. This one's pretty clean. Okay, so that's been cleaned up. We'll come back and we'll service that in a moment. Again, the pieces go right into the tray. Now we're going to come over to the main assembly. Here's your, your anti-reverse dog. And we got a big set of gears here. And we want to take our gear sleeve off. We want to do that because if there's dirt trapped in there, uh, it's going to impact performance. And the way to take the gear sleeve off, there's a pin. Take my little dead blow hammer here. There's a pin that you need to knock out in order to do that. And then you can remove it, and you can see there's a buildup of some grease and junk in here, so that's what we're going to get away. And just clean that up. If you needed to, you could use some steel wool on there. In this case, most of the, all of the grease, in fact, has come off. You want to take a cotton swab and run inside, just to get the, the dirt and grease that was in there. And I also like to take a, 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 a brush clean the channels on the gear sleeve itself and with that we can take that uh, pen precision real grease and put a light coating of grease back onto the shaft put the gear sleeve back on and then press down the pin to hold it into place and I'm just using a little channel lock pliers for that Okay, so that's the, the bridge service. We got a whole pile of washers here. 
want to make sure that the cup inside your main gear is clean and you want to check your, your main gear as well so this I'm checking for uniformity in the teeth I'm checking to make sure there isn't anything that's um, clogging any of the teeth itself kind of doing the same thing I just did with the other one it doesn't seem to be much in here but you know you're, you're taking the time to service the reel you don't need any shortcuts you can uh, and spend a minute or two doing this kind of stuff. It just makes it uh, give you a little bit more confidence when you're out there that it's nothing that's serious if you start hearing things kind of squeaking. Now these reels have been heavily fished so there is some play and some talking going on between the gears but uh, these gears are strong enough that, uh, that they will uh, overcome any kind of problems like that. Alright, so the, the main gear uh, is got the teeth cleaned. We're cleaning the bottom of it now. There is a hard washer that goes here. I don't normally remove that unless it uh, is broken. In this case it's doing fine. And then we're going to put the main gear over. And then we have a series. So uh, as I mentioned, you've got quite a few main gears, uh, drags here. I'm just searching for the one. There's one that's thicker than the other, and that that one goes on the top. And there's also a bell washer that goes on top of that. Okay, and then these have been oiled, so they're in good condition. You can see that there's a a uh, cross hatching going on here, and they're not worn, so these are all in good condition. And the way that this one works is main gear. And you have the keyed washer, which is kind of rectangular. The next drag washer goes in, and then you have the eared washer, followed by another felt or HD100 washer, followed by the rectangular keyed washer, followed by another washer, eared washer. The eared washer is the one that's almost flush with the top of the case. Last of the uh, HD100's last of the rectangular or keyed washer then the bell washer goes on top of that. That's your bridge service. And that's quite a drag stack there. Okay so we've cleaned up the case. There's a little bit of uh, oil in the back there. We're going to do the same thing on this bearing that we did on the other. We're going to flood that bearing. Going to grab a uh, a little bit more grease for the eccentric. And then we can reinstall. So we're going to come back to the yoke, which we cleaned. We're going to make sure that we get some grease on each side of that. I'm going to grab the pinion gear, which we cleaned. Now there's some stuff in here that we didn't clean, so let's get that out too while we're at it. It looks like there's a little bit of a buildup where the spool is going to mesh, so let's make sure we get that buildup out of there too. That's where this little pick comes in handy. Okay, so we're pretty much clean there now. Good. Alright, so now we've got the two springs for the yoke. This is where the parts tray is convenient and you know where to look for everything. Here's the second spring. You have our yoke and gear. On the gear we want to put some grease. The slot side faces out. I'm looking for the jack. And when you install the jack make sure that the eccentric is up top. It's almost impossible to, to get this thing on if that uh, stud is down low. Okay, here's the, here's the main difference on the left hand sided reel. We need the dog. Now you would normally put the dog on a 
on the right hand side reel on this corner but on the left hand side reel it is reversed. You want to grab the screw that's fully threaded. That goes through the bottom corner there. Just looking for the little anti-reverse dog spring. Remember we were talking about that guy falling out. And it's a small little piece. It, uh, it's easily lost. Okay, so we take our bridge assembly. We bring that in. And now we're kind of going in reverse of what we would normally do. We're, we're going counterclockwise as opposed to clock, clockwise with the, the turn. Then we mount the anti-reverse dog and then that cavity is where the spring goes. Never an easy thing, always nerve-wracking to some extent. That's the way the spring needs to look. You have it kind of lodged in the cavity pushing down on the anti-reverse dog. Then we can complete the cycle till we line up the bridge screw with the hole. Hold that tight as we turn around now to tighten down the first part of this. And I only give it a couple of turns. I don't turn everything because we've got three more screws to put in and they're, they're kind of tight tolerances here so you want to make sure that you have them all uh, started before you start turning down the rest of them. Okay, the second fully threaded screw belongs on the bottom opposite the, the other piece. And then if I didn't mention it with the first one, the top screws are partially threaded. That's so that the spring can ride up and down on that without catching on the threads. And once you get all four of them started, then you can reverse the process kind of northeast, southwest. until you tighten them down. So the difference between the red side plated and the black side plated senators, I get that question quite a bit, is ball bearings. Uh, the red sided uh, senators have the ball bearings in the cases, the more traditional ball bearings in the cases. And the other thing is the speed, the retrieve speed. So the Early editions of the black sided senators were almost identical to the Long Beach line with the exception of some chrome rings and a little bit heftier drag system, but uh, pretty much from a, a gearing standpoint and everything they were lower speed type of reels. And when they went to the red side plates they upped the ante with the bearings and they, um, they increased the, the main gear size. Okay, so we're pretty much set on that. I've put that harness slug back in. Just a little bit of grease onto the shaft of the spool. We can turn around this and we can reinstall. Now, a lot of times folks will start to reinstall and we got the, the space there and they're figuring what's going on. Trip that free spool back and that space disappears. It's nothing you did wrong if, you, if you're fighting that case. All right, and then I like to just get them started here. Side to side, up and down, and then fill in the gaps with these. So a lot of people get intimidated by a reel, don't uh, necessarily either have the time or the inclination to fix or repair or tune up the reel, but uh, Sometimes they start and they get stuck. If you're one of those people, you're stuck on the middle of a real tune-up or that, um, just drop me a note in the comment section or, or send me an email. I'll try to unstick you uh, and get you back on track. If, uh, if you've got a reel and you haven't had the time or the inclination to tune it up but it needs to be tuned up, I do work on those by, uh, by mail and I would be happy to uh, to work with you on that if you uh, if you need your reel tuned up for the coming season or if it's broken and needs to be repaired uh, just contact me through the um, email at the end of uh, or, uh, by email through my uh, card that's on the back end of this video here and again if you're a first responder during the month of May 
I am offering to repair your, and tune up your reel at no charge. So please take advantage of that. Uh, it's just my way of saying thank you to you all. Okay, we're just coming down to the end of this now. I just noticed I put a screw in incorrectly here. Just looking into my basket. There's two different types of threading on these screws. One is a coarse th thread and the other is a uh, machine thread. The machine thread goes into the cross post up top. So that's another suggestion that I make if you um, if you're unfamiliar with the reel or if it's been some time since you've worked on the reel, make sure you go ahead and take pictures along the way of what you're doing. That way when it comes to uh, reassembly, you'll have the, uh, the pictures there to help you if you kind of got lost, lost your track there. Okay, just a couple more. We'll give it a test drive. We'll see how we did. And we'll get this one back out there fishing along the northeast uh, seaboard. I uh, trust that uh, it's, we're just finally starting to get a little bit of let up here in the, the activities that we're permitted to do. And boating just opened up this past weekend. Of course, it's kind of limited. You need to have a boat, but Ron has a boat. Uh, so uh, hopefully pretty soon uh, the charter industry and that will be back uh, so in the community as well. Okay. So we're going to put this back on now. Now this is interesting. The threading on this is reverse of what you would normally expect. The threading for a left-handed reel is opposite a right-handed reel from a drag tightening. And that would make sense. It's on the other side of the reel. Okay, so we've got our star adjuster on. Handles on next, and the screw goes on after that. And then we'll give it a test drive. So the, the, the key difference here is that the anti-reverse dog mounts to the opposite side, and the threading on the star adjuster is opposite as well. Now they make conversion kits, interestingly enough, I just saw that, I was talking to Maureen down at uh, Mystic Parts uh, about uh, left-handed reels, and uh, here you go, uh, she tells me they actually make a conversion kit if you have a right-handed reel and want to convert it to a left one. It's not cheap, but uh, these reels aren't cheap either. There you go, so that's it, that's a tune-up of the, the one, uh, 113H. Special Senator 4.0 and this one in the left-handed variety. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, uh, please like it and subscribe if you want to see some more. Uh, comments are always welcome regardless of whether it's about this particular reel or as I mentioned, if you're stuck on a particular project or you just have a question on a reel in general, uh, I try to respond to all of my comments that I receive. So with that, please stay safe, listen to the authorities, stay healthy. Uh, we will get through this, and we will get through it together. So thank you again to the first responders. Have a great day. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.